Thanks for having me this morning. I'm Nathan Mikowski. So I'll be um, talking about how we're extending some of this work to that started with people with spinal cord injury and moving it into stroke survivors. So I'm based at Metro Health Medical Center. I'm a research faculty in physical medicine and rehabilitation, but most of this work has happened at the Cleveland VA. And so hemiparesis uh, after stroke limits mobility and independence and weakness. Is um, that something I did? Closer to the mic? Yeah. Oh, sorry. Okay. Will do. All right. So weakness, um, spasticity, altered reflexes, and abnormal synergies can impact the entire affected limb. Uh, here you see a gentleman walking after stroke with a relatively stiff-legged gait, but he's still pretty quick. Um, he's hip hiking, and you see that he's walking a little bit slower. There's asymmetry in the walking, shorter step lengths, as well as reduced push-off which results also in slower walking and less swing. And this can increase the risk of falls through limited toe clearance, um, impaired balance and reduced knee stability. And so present options, the, in terms of, so I'm not gonna talk about the therapeutic interventions, I'm mostly talking about assistive devices. And so the present, the main option is an ankle foot orthosis which is a plastic brace that keeps the ankle dorsiflexed to um, reduce catching the toe on the ground. Um, surface dorsiflexion stimulation, so to use electrical stimulation to provide dorsiflexion to provide that toe clearance um, is available through a few companies. Bioness also has a device that can be configured for either um, knee extension or knee flexion. And then People have also been using exoskeletons for mobility. Um, a lot of these devices don't necessarily impact people's walking speed and get them up to the speeds necessary for walking independently in the community. And putting on a large exoskeleton like this is not necessarily a practical thing for someone who has hemiparesis on a, doing that on a daily basis. And so, we are looking at using both implanted and non-invasive approaches. Um, we're moving towards using the, the network neuroprosthesis uh, that Dr. Hoyan talked about earlier. Um, here shows an illustration of kind of where we think we're going with that, where we can stimulate muscles throughout the impaired limb and record from muscles both on the impaired side and on the, the motor and tech side. And then we're also looking at non-invasive interventions because not everyone's going to be a good candidate for surgery. And so combining surface electrical stimulation um, with a reduced amount of exoskeletal assistance. Um, so here I'll talk about some of the work that we're doing to explore some of these approaches. So this gentleman had a stroke two years prior to implant. He had left-sided weakness and tone. He's wearing an AFO in this video. Uh, you can see that he has a stiff-legged gait. He's um, kind of swinging his leg forward to produce swing. And then he takes a very sh short, quick step with his, his good side. He can walk in the home, but outside of the home, he uses a wheelchair or he used a wheelchair. So he was implanted with that first generation device. Uh, so the eight channel stimulator with intramuscular electrodes with mus targeting muscles that cross the hip, the knee and the ankle. And so Dr. Pinot implanted the system and we used a simple heel switch to trigger stimulation during swing phase and stance phase. Um, this sort of just gives an example of the timing of stimulation applied to different muscles relative to gait events. And so here we on the top shows him walking with his wife uh, with the stimulation off. And on the bottom, he's walking with her with the stimulation on. Um, you'll notice he actually started about the same spot in front of that sign and you can't even see the sign now in the bottom portion. And so there's a pretty big effect in terms of, he's able to change his walking pattern. It's a smoother, more dynamic walking um, pattern. And he's a lot faster. And so as Dr. Triolo was talking about before, we've looked both at some of the therapeutic effects as well as the neuroprosthetic effects. And so in terms of his speed, we saw a modest improvement without the stimulation after he went through the training. But when the biggest change was when he's walking with the stimulation assistance compared to without, and his walking speed about doubled 
Um, but we still have room for improvement to get people up to the speeds that are used during um, independent community ambulation. And then his six minute walk speeds were comparable to his 10 meter walk. And so we looked at, well, how far can he go? And so we measured distance every two minutes and without stimulation. So when he started, he was able to walk, maybe he couldn't walk a hundred meters on his own, but he um, improved through the training and with, without stimulation was able to walk for 16 minutes and about 400 meters. But then with stimulation, that was when there was a substantial improvement and he was able to walk over 40 minutes um, and almost 1500 meters. And so we also have a gentleman with an incomplete spinal cord injury who we implanted because he presents very similar to stroke due to his injury. Um, and so we're kind of using him as a proxy for people who have pretty severe paralysis. And so he used a power wheelchair um, for uh, mobility, but then uses a KAFO for stepping in therapy, but really didn't step. And so here we were recording muscle from muscles on his good leg and his, his right leg is pretty much paralyzed. And so we were using that to, um, figure out targets for triggering stimulation based on the EMG signals. And so during, this is during the surgical pr planning process, uh, where we looked at some of his EMG signals and then used them, uh, the signals in the quad on his good leg to then trigger the initiation of swing on his impaired side. You, well, it's a little hard to see here because they, they line up, the EMG estimated swing lines up pretty well with the um, heel strike. And so there's no buttons being pressed here. He's stepping and as he steps um, with his left leg, we then trigger the stimulation on the surface with the right leg. And so then after this, he was implanted um, in 2019. And so he came back to the lab a couple times right before COVID and we set up some stimulation. Oh, so his comment here was after going through this was, it feels like walking, which clearly the other did not without with the KAFO that just felt like he was dragging his leg. And so uh, he was implanted um, pre-COVID. He came in for a couple sessions and then uh, before we had him back in to evaluate uh, his system, um, COVID hit, so we've had to delay him uh, coming back. So hopefully we'll be having him in again in the near future. So he currently has his system at home that he's using for um, walking exercise, standing. Uh, he has a, electrodes in his trunk as well. Let's see here. So the top is just for comparison, him without the stimulation. And then the bottom is with stimulation we slowed things down in the bottom. And so we made it so it's a combination of the implanted myoelectric recording electrodes and an acceler accelerometer on his uh, walker um, for stepping. And so he's currently using his system at home. He has the second generation uh, IST device implanted. And so not everyone who's had a stroke is going to be a good candidate for an implanted device uh, due to surgical considerations. And so we're also working on a non-invasive hybrid approach combining uh, surface electrical stimulation applied to muscles and the thigh and the shank to assist um, primarily drive um, improvements in walking speed. And then we also have an exoskeletal knee uh, to ensure that we get to sufficient toe clearance during swing and knee stability during stance. Uh, Dr. Hanat will talk more about the uh, hybrid project that this stems from. And so as oh, we also have sensors, a variety of sensors so that we can then coordinate the assistance with what the individual is doing. And so because prototypes are always bigger than the concept art, uh, this shows you our first uh, prototype with a fair amount of adjustability uh, in terms of the orthotics. Uh, for different people. And then we've integrated the stimulation um, underneath. And so here we currently are in the process of testing and developing uh, controllers to coordinate the assistance with uh, stroke survivors movement and walking ability. So I'd like to, there's a lot of people who have contributed to making all of this happen and work. So I'd like to thank everyone who's actually made this 
made this happen as well as the funding agencies um, who've supported it, both the NIH and the VA. So thank you.